when uh, that was like one of the first fiddle things I ever found. Mm-hmm. So, but it's a great exercise because it's hard to do. So you right? get, get, to get your a, hands get the going. Time, right? Yeah. You know, just to get everything yeah. going, right? So that's my little warm-up. So around. D- Dak Prescott's got his, like, swivel hip yeah, thing, you know, all other players are out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk about new music. I mean, how, how, about long, that? how long has it been since you put out a new album? Seven years, mm-hmm. uh, if that sounds right. I, um, I kind of prescribe to the guy, Clark, who I, I still think is the greatest songwriter of all time. Um, you know, I, I always ask him, so when do you know it's time to put out a record? He goes, when I got about 10 good ones. Right, right. <laughs> and so, Enough tracks to make it out. Right, album. exactly. And so uh, we had a few more than that. And, um, you know, it was COVID time, so we had a lot of downtime. Uh, me and my wife have a little place that we share with another couple that, up in Steamboat. And mm-hmm. so they were out of town. And so I took my whole band up there and we wrote songs and had a like just a wonderful kind of musical weekend. Um, and and then we, we got into the studio. Um, I rented out a house that belonged to the guy who, Dwight Baker, who produced the, the, the album. He had the house connected to the studio. So we all stayed in the house. And I mean, it was, yeah, like I said, it was COVID time. So everybody being in the same place mm-hmm. and never going anywhere was a really handy way to do things. Are you one of those guys who you work on a few ideas and you keep a notebook of them and you've got a few things working, then you get in there and you finish them off? Or I know some artists, they get in the room and that's where the magic happens. What's what's the process like for you? Um, as far as the songwriting goes, I listen to what's going on. Mm-hmm. And it's usually, I can't work with more than two. I mean, three people making a song is kind of the max. But, um, but with, with two people making a song, there's always somebody that has a hot hand, right? Somebody that has a better kind of take sure and so you listen to that and whoever has that take kind of you know gets to run the, the show but there's the other guy coming to go, ah, mm-hmm. ah, oh you know and so um that's how that works for me but in the studio like when we're making the actual project happen i i like to get in with a with a with a sense of what i want mm-hmm. and then i have to get out because i start to put too much of i'm not a great drummer i'm not a great piano player i'm not a very good guitar player <laughs> you know i can write and sing and i can be a front man all you want but um it's i don't think it's my job to to once i get past the, the very kind of basic direction of the song mm-hmm. i let the really pro musicians take over i sing a, a, a we, you know a scratch vocal yeah sing a scratch vocal and then let them do their work i go away maybe write another song work on something else, uh, but I got to give them their space to, to where they're, you know, they don't feel like I'm hovering. Mm-hmm. How would you say this process compares to, you know, you mentioned album 14, 15, you know, how mm-hmm. does this compare to album number one? Well, album number one I did with, uh, was Here We Go, I did it with um, Lloyd Maines, mm-hmm. and he had no choice but to literally hold my hand through all of it. Like just- Because you're like, learning I as you do no it. I had no idea how to do anything. I didn't know, um, you know, I mean, I mean, I knew my guitar was in tune, but I didn't know it was, if it was like really in tune, <laughs> you know, it's like that album simple. level tune. Right. Exactly. It's yeah. that simple. Right. Uh-huh. D- d- hey man, put, now tug on that D string a little bit. It's a, uh, <laughs> it's a little short. And, um, and then, you know, he'd always laugh at me cause I'd, you know, mess up a lyric. You know, now Pat, you, you wrote this, right? <laughs> and that's just, a, yeah. First record's the first record. And I, Man, I, there's some songs that I think are kind of, you know, at, at the shallow end of the pool in, on that. But I, the guy Fred Rimmert, who was the uh, who was our engineer, goes, "That's why it's a record. It's mm-hmm. a record of where you were." And then, you know, he goes, "You know, the Beatles had I want to hold your hand before they got to Sgt. Pepper, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> you got to, and before they got to Revolver, and before they got, you know." So we were talking about the, the Paul McCartney yeah. earlier. That's why I bring that up. I'm not comparing myself to the Beatles by any stretch, but I'm saying that everybody has a beginning. And I think what you hear here in this, on this record, on Miles and Miles of You, is um, a record of where I'm at. I'm 50. Yeah. You know, and I've certainly <laughs> aged. Right. But you were how old with that first album? What, early 20s? Uh, that was 1995, so okay. I was 23. All right, so so 23 when you mm-hmm. record the first one. This one comes out, you're 50. 
how, how different are you, Pat Green, at 50 now than that 23-year-old? I'm a lot more settled. You know, the old joke, the two bulls sitting, the young bull and the old bull up on top of the hill, and the young bull says, let's run down there, and the old bull says, let's walk down. I'm, I've learned to walk <laughs> instead of run. And uh, I, I, enjoy, um, I, I enjoy my family. Mm-hmm. Um, there's no way for me to say how much I treasure my time with those people that live in this house. Well, Kellis just moved down to Austin to go to UT, so mm-hmm. that was a long couple of weeks. But um, uh, man, uh, uh, yeah, it's just a, I don't know, it's a different air to breathe. I imagine when you go to a lot of your shows now, the people in the in the audience have become friends over the years too because you've seen sure. them time and time yeah. again and they, they're singing your lyrics back to you. I mean, that experience has to be completely different now. Uh, it's fulfilling. I, I do have a great sense of, uh, what I think what I would say my, my biggest, the most overwhelming feeling I have is gratitude. Mm. And just really, you know, to have a career that lasts 25, 30 years is, is very unusual in the music business. And I think, man, this is a pretty special thing um, to have underneath the old, you know, that, that's a good notch on the belt. Yeah. So uh, I, I really enjoy the nostalgia side of my life is, it's, it's great. It's fun to look back. It's fun to be in the moment right now, but it's, you know, it's, I, you know, trying to stay in my lane and all that and all this, cli- I've, I just spoke it out about, I spit it out about, you know, 13 cliches right there. But um, <laughs> I mean, the reality <laughs> is it, it's, it's, a, it's a fun place to be. Well, they're cliches for a reason. I mean, they, they, yeah, they, Jack Ingram, it's funny how the truth sounds so cliche. Right. Great line. I'll never forget that line. I say it all the time. <laughs> uh, you know, I've talked about this before, and, and a lot of this is a get to, not, ha- not a have to, you know, and, and yes. both in perspective and just where you are in life and all that kind of stuff. You know, is it, making an album, is it a, I have something to say and I want to say it? Is it, this is still fun? This is still an itch I enjoy scratching? How would you describe that? I think it's great when a song turns out, man. I, I love when you have that moment and you're just like, yeah, that's that's worthy of being out there with my name on it. Okay. And um, is that bar higher than it used to be? Absolutely, it's much much higher. There's yeah. a lot more throwaways now, right? There's a lot of songs where I'm just sitting in there going, "Man, that is so campy and <laughs> ridiculous," and just you know, yeah, a, a little too cliche, if you will. Sure. <laughs> you yeah. Know? So, uh, yeah, I, there's a lot of songs that go in the wastebasket, but um, a lot of those songs that end up in the wastebasket always get revisited, you know, mm-hmm. get revisited sometime later, and some of them can be salvaged. <laughs> well, I, so I've gotten to hear some of the album. Uh, I mean, it, it, I turn it on, it's Pat Green. It you know, feels yeah. like it's, it's vintage you in, in some ways, but the rest of the tracks that folks get a chance to hear, what, what can they expect? I like, I think we did a good job of, you know, um, getting to a very vulnerable side of me, like really get to my true emotions, my mm. true feelings. Um, Rodney Foster always told me that um, if you want to write a great song, you just, all you have to do is tell the truth. I was like, well, that's a pretty that's basic sentence, than but, it sounds. but it's right, it's, it's spot on. So you have to tell exactly how you feel. And then when it comes out of your mouth, you know, I'll, then I go back to, uh, I read a lot and I, I, I write a, a lot and, you know, little short stories and fun things just to keep my brain working. But um, I go back to, um, to Stephen King on writing when he, you know, and omit. What you omit is as important as what you keep. So you can say things with a lot fewer words than do it. And so, yeah, the edit process is, is important. Mm-hmm. And, and what are you saying at 50? What are you telling people? What parts of yourself are you uh, putting I'm, out there? I'm still in love with my girl, that uh, I've made some humongous fundamental errors in judgment. <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta laugh at that stuff. You gotta look at that you know, and go, okay, I'm still upright and breathing. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, yeah, I mean, but I don't think that anybody that's ever gone this path from Johnny Cash to Willie Nelson, way on down the track to me that hadn't, uh, you know, 
<laughs> seen what the ditch looks like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty boring if they haven't. I mean, right. right? Exactly. You're, you're getting some of the yeah. music that's just campy and there's nothing to it. No, no seasoning, yeah. no texture. Well, there's definitely seasoning and texture. Look, I'm, thir- I'm 25 years old right now. Just look at this. It's crazy. <laughs> From San Antonio, spent miles on the road, you know, been all over the state countless times in addition to, you know, outside Texas. But, it, it you know, in, in reading some of the publicity for this, it feels like there's a little bit of, you know, the mile marker aspect of, of we're, sure, yeah. we're, we're looking back, not like this is the end of the career or anything, but yeah. just feels reminiscent maybe. I have a map upstairs in my office. Um, it's, you know, you know, map of the U.S. and it has a little pin for mm-hmm. every place I've ever been. And we're running out of space. <laughs> I mean, it, yeah, man. I, uh, I love what Jerry Jeff Walker always said. My dance card's been punched. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> God rest his soul. But um, yeah, I, I have seen an awful lot mm-hmm. in these. You know, I, that, that line from Carry On, uh, uh, old Walt Wilkins, you know, his eyes have seen the miles. And I feel the same way. Yeah, man, what, what a trip. You know, I've seen a lot of great, great stuff. Mm-hmm. I've seen some stuff I don't really want to see again. <laughs> yeah. You know, but, uh, but haven't we all? Do, do you have a favorite song on the album, a favorite new song that you're most I'm excited going home to hear? Is, is the most vulnerable song. Uh, it really hit exactly where I was when we were, what I was feeling when we recorded this record. That's, ooh. Um, uh, I'm, as far as my favorite, like to listen to sonically, mm-hmm. I think Bad Bones has got such a funky, cool vibe to it. I think Born on April 5th is so biogra- autobiographical mm-hmm. and then uh, Steady about my wife. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's hard to pick your kids, but those, yeah. those four songs I think are the, the, the higher level songs. I, I feel like putting out a new record at this point in my career is you know it's kind of in god's hands where it goes mm-hmm. uh, or the fans hands whatever i mean i don't you know i don't want to get all wax philosophic or anything like that but really um nobody puts out a record and doesn't hope that it does something fantastic right nobody says oh you know i just hope i could play a few more coffee shops mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, we're all going for the, for the brass ring and yeah. um and if that happens then great but i haven't also have a, a, an awareness of where I am in my career and um, it's you know Santana I mean he blew up again and you know Willie Nelson certainly he's I mean he's still riding high as he mm-hmm. ever has and so um, you know yeah I, I, I keep my hopes in uh, the right place like well, here's hoping it surpasses those hopes yeah, yeah, right. always want. yeah exactly. a pleasant surprise but I hope we have a reason to raise a glass and say man we really kind of we really hit, nailed it, but yeah. I'm also, I just love that, you know, the folks that like my music have mm-hmm. something else to listen to because we, it's been a while. Mm-hmm.